might not happen. SpaceX might skip the Starship Tower catch on Flight 5. This comes from safety concerns for the ground infrastructure. Besides, there are many other problems involving SpaceX's first attempt to catch the largest vehicle in the next launch. Shall they give up? Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. But before we begin, let's subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with the latest space news. On July 5th, closely one month after Starship Flight 4, Elon Musk fired the space community up with a tweet announcing Flight 5's launch window, Flight 5 in four weeks. It's safe to say that the successful booster landing on Flight 4 motivated SpaceX to enter Flight 5, where we will witness chopsticks catching Super Heavy for the first time. Can't wait to see the catch and hear the sonic booms. However, because it's the very first Starship catch on land, so a cautious scenario with various backup plans is compulsory. Elon Musk said, but the booster will come back, it'll have an impact point that's out to sea, so it'll have to steer itself towards the, the, the tower with the catch arms. Everything will happen as follows. Over three minutes after liftoff, the booster will separate from its companion. It will then perform a series of maneuvers to orient itself and steer toward the designated landing or catching location. There will be two situations happening here. In a bad scenario, if the booster detects anything's wrong, it'll suicide itself into the ocean at an impact point. The impact point of the booster, meaning where it lands or hits the water. The rocket booster is programmed to land or impact in predetermined safe zones over the ocean, away from populated areas. However, Elon Musk believes that the booster will come back. It'll have to steer itself toward the tower with the catch arms. Two critical factors come into play here, deceleration and navigation, which will be managed by two systems, the grid fins and the engine. Fortunately, both operated well in the last flight test, given that the grid fins were intact when B-11 landed. Although the middle engine broke down during re-entry, it's not a big deal. Evidently, the vehicle had a deceleration from over 1,200 to approximately 10 kilometers per hour in less than 20 seconds. However, many believe that 10 km per hour is still too fast for a precise landing on Mechazilla. So, what do you think? Share your thoughts. To have a precise landing at a tenth minute after liftoff, Super Heavy needs the support of the chopsticks. Honestly, this is as challenging as catching an egg, meaning the timing of this action has to be measured in seconds. The margin for error is tiny, so the slightest delay could result in an explosion. SpaceX started to test the catching system on June 26 on B-14.1. During the test, the poor booster got six smacks from the pair of steel arms, allowing SpaceX to test and train the programming used to maneuver the gigantic Mechazilla arms. From that, they can find the right speed to bring them in, avoiding an accident between the arm and the booster. Simultaneously, the Starship team can find out how much endurance B-14.1 has. Of course, no one wants to see any booster crushed under the power of giant arms. Fortunately, after the test, the booster just got slight damage, and it was rolled away to the five-star resort, namely Rocket Garden. Hopefully, given the data collected through the test, SpaceX will widen the safety margin for the future catch. To support the attempt to catch Starship in Flight 5, technical preparation is just a necessary condition. So what is the sufficient condition? Well, it's the FAA's launch and re-entry license. The FAA is tasked with ensuring the safety of people and property on the ground. Previously, for the four test flights of Starship, we had heard of launch licenses many times, but possibly had never heard of re-entry licenses. But this type of license will become more popular in Flight 5 onwards. What goes up must have a pre-launch re-entry license to come down. In April, the agency issued a notice stating that re-entry vehicles must secure their license for returning to Earth before the agency will approve a launch. They wrote that launch of a re-entry vehicle without authorization for re-entry would pose safety concerns that are designed to be addressed by the re-entry licensing process. Given the fact that SpaceX intends to return Super Heavy to land rather than drop it into the unpopulated area as ocean, the re-entry license is intended to mitigate the risk to the public. The agency only approves missions that have a 1 in 10,000 or less chance of taking out an unsuspecting Earthling. This will pose some challenges for SpaceX to prove to the FAA that they can land the booster safely at Starbase. 
During a closed community talk given in Port Isabel, Texas on June 27, Starbase General Manager Kathy Lutters showed her uncertainty about catching Starship by Mechazilla Arms in Flight 5. Her first set of comments for SpaceX's plans to catch Starship with the tower came during the presentation, when Loiters shared that her firm is gradually increasing the technological risks of its tests. According to her, our idea of success is to be able to continue to further demonstrate and learn from the mission and make the next mission go even more further as we're continuing to learn. At one stage, at our final stage, we would like to be able to target and be able to return the vehicles to the pad, but we want to make sure we're doing these demonstrations in safe locations before we go do that, right? This is actually the smartest way to develop is to do this this way to make sure that um, you're buying down the risk in safe places so that you're not going to potentially cause infrastructure issues on your demonstration missions. However, fast forward to July 4th with the video released, SpaceX reconfirmed that a Starship booster catch will happen. For those who haven't watched, I will spoil the video's content. Basically, the video provided new footage of Flight 4 from a camera on top of the 71-meter-tall first stage, as well as a nearby buoy at water level. It focuses mostly on the super-heavy booster stage and its entry into the Gulf. The most intriguing scene is at the end of the video when SpaceX teases an image of Starship's large launch tower in South Texas at the Starbase facility. The tower is spreading its pair of arms to welcome the booster coming home. That time, the title, Flight 5 Inches, appeared and then faded out. Such a landing is stunning visually but is also a calculated risk to SpaceX's launch tower infrastructure. You know, the booster likely would land with a few spare tons of methane and liquid oxygen propellant in its tanks. Not only the launch tower but SpaceX also raised concerns about the other infrastructures that will be affected by its attempt to catch the booster. SpaceX has invested over $3 billion to develop its launch and production site. With the pace of Starship tests picking up, Loiter's earlier talks have also highlighted her firm's plans to set up a new factory in the area to make its rockets. SpaceX chief Elon Musk has speculated that this new facility, dubbed Star Factory, might be able to make thousands of rockets. According to Loiter's, SpaceX has earmarked an additional $400 million in funds for Star Factory and associated offices. She added that SpaceX's presence in the region has enabled the state and local government to generate more than $800 million in taxes. SpaceX has also spent more than $90 million to acquire goods and services from local suppliers in the Rio Grande Valley, according to data shared in Loiter's presentation. It has more than 3,400 contractors and full-time employees at the facility and estimates from the firm also suggest that Starbase has helped generate more than 20,000 additional jobs in the area. Nevertheless, that doesn't mean SpaceX should not challenge itself in the upcoming flight. The bottom line always is the detailed calculation with various backup plans. Additionally, can't help but mention the consultation of a large and experienced agency like the FAA. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.